welcome to Unsightly Opinions. If you're new, my name's Tamara. Today, we are going to be talking about how to use a white cane. There's a whole history to the white cane and different meanings behind the different colors associated with the white cane, and it can identify what type of visual impairment, but I think that's something for another video. Today, I wanna to talk about how you use a white cane for mobility reasons. So if you're not just trying to identify yourself as having a visual impairment, how do you properly use a white cane to get around? Please note that I am not a specialized orientation and mobility instructor. I don't have special training to teach someone how to use a white cane, but I have been using a white cane for over 20 years and I've had many, many years of instruction that I'm hoping to pass on to you today. I also recognize that it's not necessarily possible for everybody to access white cane training when they need it. So this will at least get you on the right path while you're waiting for specialized training. Two final pieces of advice before I take you outside if you're starting to use a white cane. First, you don't have to be completely blind to use a white cane for mobility reasons. If you think using a white cane is going to make you more confident, use it. You don't need to fall into any special category. If it will help you, if you think it'll help you, use it. The second piece of advice is start slow. If you're not sure about the ground in front of you, if you're not feeling particularly confident, move slowly, you'll be more relaxed, and you can gradually increase your pace over time. For those of you who are wondering what type of cane I use, I'm using a five-piece Ambutech folding mobility cane. I believe this cane is the carbon fiber cane. I just checked, it's actually the graphite cane. Rather than the old metal cane, I find it a little bit lighter, I find it a little more durable, and I like the way it feels. I also have a roller tip or a roller ball tip on the end, and I find that goes over cracks much easier. But I'm not going to recommend any specific cane because I think each to their own, you will know what you like once you try out a few different things. Now let's head outside and I'll show you how to use a white cane. We are now outside in a really quiet neighborhood to demonstrate how to use your cane in the most basic setting, following along a sidewalk. If you're wondering why I'm in gloves and a sun hat, I'm albino. So it's still cold outside, but there's enough sun that I need to keep it off my face. But getting on to cane work, the first thing you're going to want to do is know what to do when you've stopped moving. When you've stopped moving, hold your cane close to your body. I like to keep it close to myself with one hand or the other resting on the grip, and I keep it in between my toes. That way, if I'm not moving, I'm not going to trip anybody else around me by having my cane out in front of me. People aren't expecting to have things low to the ground. They might not see it and we don't want to trip any more people than we have to. But when we do start moving, there's a special way that we want to hold the cane and move with our cane. I'm going to start with constant contact or the sweeping technique where you sweep back and forth every time you walk. There's another common technique called two point touch that I don't prefer. I prefer constant contact because I want to get as much information or contact or tactile feedback from my environment. So when my cane is sweeping constantly in front of me, I'm not going to miss details like cracks or bumps or drop-offs or changes in texture, changes in location. I'm going to be able to count or do a lot of things that I would miss if I had two-point touch. Not that it's a worse technique, a lot of people prefer it, it's just not my technique. So I'm going to show you what I prefer. When you're going to want to start moving with your cane, you're going to stretch it out in front of you so the tip is on the ground and the top is in line with your belly button. The way that you grip your cane is so that your thumb is pointing to the sky and your index finger stretches out along the flat side of the grip. Your other three fingers wrap around the bottom. Your index finger is going to be pointing towards the tip of your cane that's on the ground. And then your three fingers wrap underneath, your thumb is on top. And then the top of your cane remains in line with your belly button. I have to make some slight adjustments for me because I don't have very strong wrists. So I actually end up moving my cane down the grip slightly so I can rest it along my forearm slightly. And I use my entire forearm to sweep back and forth rather than just my wrist but most people will just use their wrist to sweep. So once you've got your static grip, what you're going to want to do is start by feeling and swinging your cane back and forth in front of you. What you're going to aim for is a constant pendulum back and forth from left to right, left to right, and you're going to sweep just outside your shoulder width on both sides. The reason we're going slightly wider than our shoulders is because there might be objects to our side that might have projections that you don't want to run into that might clip you at shoulder or head level. So that's why we sweep slightly wider than our body is to get more information about what's around us before we run into it. 
So what you're going to want to do is try and create a pendulum. So you're going to sweep left and right and left and right, just slightly wider than your shoulder. Half a foot to a foot, 30 centimeters on either side is usually plenty. When you start moving with your cane, what you're going to want to do is sweep in the opposite direction to the foot you're going to step forward on. So if I'm sweeping left, I'm going to step forward with my right foot. If I'm stepping left, I'm sweeping right. And the reason we do that is because if you're sweeping in the same direction as the foot that's coming down, you might kick your cane. The other reason is we want as much information about where we're going next before we get there. So you're essentially sweeping across where that foot is going or where it's just about to go to get the information. As I'm traveling, if I'm stepping right, I'm sweeping left. If I'm sweeping right, I'm stepping left. And then we follow that pattern and you can gradually increase your speed as you get comfortable with it and move through your environment. I find practicing on sidewalks to be the easiest way to start practicing. When we're on sidewalks, there's something else you can do called a shorelining technique. And I love shorelining. I find it's the best way to kind of keep oriented in a line or direction. So what shorelining is, is you're going to follow one of the edges of something that you're traveling along to help make sure that you're staying going in the correct direction. When I'm on a wide sidewalk, I usually stick to the right hand side and I'm going to shoreline the right side of the sidewalk to make sure I continue following the path. So in this case, when I sweep to the right, I'm going to encounter grass. When I sweep to the left, it's just sidewalk. But if I ever got to a point where I'm getting grass on the left, I know I've usually drifted across the sidewalk to the left. So I will reorient myself to the right and continue on my line of travel. So every second sweep, I'm going to come into contact with grass. You can probably hear it. So as I step right, I'm getting sidewalk on the left. As I step left, I'm getting grass on the right. So as I move, I am getting grass every second sweep. And that's helping me stay in line. Whether there's curves or changes in direction, I can follow that seamlessly and the direction is just changing. So we have just changed direction and that was relatively seamless. And you're gonna wanna keep your cane moving at all times because if you don't swing fast enough, you're going to encounter cracks, your cane's gonna get stuck and you're gonna jab yourself in the gut. That's it for basic cane travel. Let me show you one more thing shorelining is really great at. We've changed locations again. We are now in a residential area. The other thing I love to use in terms of shorelining is to use it for counting. I can count driveways, I can count houses, and I can stay oriented and find my position on a street just by that change in the shoreline on my right or left. So in this case, I'm going to be counting driveways. Right on my right right now is probably someone's yard. I feel grass. It will change at some point into concrete or pebbles or something else and that will indicate a driveway to me. Sometimes you can even feel the crease where it changes from sidewalk to driveway. So I will try and follow that along and I will try not to drift. I've just encountered driveway and I can feel there's a, there's a ridge there. I could follow that along. Okay, I feel a different texture on my right, so that's probably a second driveway. Grass again, so that's a house or somebody else's yard. And I feel concrete and pebbles again, so that's probably somebody else's driveway. So we've just counted three houses just by using our cane's contact on the ground to keep us oriented in space. We have come to a completely new area now because I want to talk about what it's like to travel with a cane when you're on uneven ground surface. I am standing on a dirt path currently, and we're gonna talk about how cane travel changes depending on the surface that you're on. As I move forward, if the ground is still relatively smooth, I'm going to use the same sweeping technique I'd use on any sidewalk. So as I step right, my cane swings to the left just outside my shoulder width. As I step left, my cane 
cane sweeps to the right. And I'm going to follow that pattern so long as the cane isn't getting stuck. As my cane, oh, the ground surface has just changed here. So what's going to happen is I'm going to move to something closer to a two point touch technique. So what that means is my cane isn't gonna sweep all the way across me anymore because it's getting stuck. I'm just going to tap the outside corner of where my cane would have swept to on either side. So as I step with my right foot, my cane is going to tap outside my shoulder width on the left. Then it's going to create a very slight arc as I move to the right as I step with my left foot. So still using that opposite across your body technique with your cane, but I'm only going to tap my cane on the corners rather than sweeping across myself. And you don't wanna swing your cane way in the air. You just wanna lift it far enough off the ground that it's not going to get caught every five seconds. That's all you're trying to do is keep your cane opposite to you and use a two point touch. You're still going to have fairly good tactile understanding of what's in front of you but you're not going to be jabbing yourself in the gut every five seconds. We are now at a relatively busy lit intersection and I'm going to show you how I do that with my white cane. If you're new to cane travel, I would strongly encourage you to seek professional training from an orientation and mobility specialist or speak to your local blind organization for training because this is one of the most dangerous things you can do as a blind or low vision person. From the people I have spoken to in the blind community, they say it's not a matter of if you'll get hit by a car, but when you'll get hit by a car. And I have had many, many close encounters and I am a good cane traveler. So again, if you're new to that, I strongly suggest that you seek some kind of professional training to do this safely if you intend to do this in your daily life. But let's talk about how I do it with a cane. So when I'm coming to an intersection or when I hear the traffic going across my path, or perpendicular to where I'm traveling, I know I'm getting close to the intersection. So I will feel with my cane for both sides of the sidewalk and try and orient myself to the side closest to the street. As I come towards the intersection, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be feeling for when the elevation changes in the sidewalk. So as it starts slanting down like it is right now, and I have the confirmation of these extra ridges that happens at every intersection where I live, I know I've reached the down curb, so I am relatively close to where I can cross the street safely. Now that I have reached the down curb, what I am doing is I am listening to the traffic, and because I am not going to cross the street in the straight direction, I'm going to turn right to cross. What I'm going to do is I'm going to listen to the traffic to make sure that I am facing in the correct direction. So the traffic is traveling both parallel and vertical to my direction. In this case, I wanna make sure I'm hearing the traffic in just my left ear and it's not going off at an angle. That takes a lot of practice. When I am going to cross the street, I'm listening for my near parallel surge of traffic. So what that means is I have to listen to make sure cars aren't turning. I have to listen to make sure that the cars closest to me are going straight through the intersection before I know it's safe to cross. If I had vision, I would just see when the little Walkman was on the other side of the street, but unfortunately I can't see that and I can't magnify enough to ever see that, so I have to use exclusively my ears to know when it's safe to cross. So I'm going to stop and actually listen to my traffic now and see when it's safe to cross. Sometimes it takes me two or three rounds to make sure there's no turn signal, make sure that I know when it's safe and understand when that is. And that is my near parallel surge. No cars crossed in front of me, so I'm going to cross the street now. And I generally move fairly quickly because I don't want to get caught in the middle of an intersection when the light changes and I don't know when that is and I've made it safely to the other side. I did drift slightly because I didn't quite hit the up curb. That's something else that can be really challenging when you don't have anything to kind of keep you oriented in space. It's easy to drift left or right. So I probably drifted one of those two directions. I imagine I probably drifted away from the traffic based on the sound because I did hit the sidewalk. But that's how I crossed the street using my white cane. 
Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like content like this, please don't forget to subscribe, hit that notification bell, hit a like, share it around, leave me comments. I'd love to hear from you all. If you want to keep up to date with what's going on in between uploads, I have my accessible Twitch streams Sunday nights, 7.30 Mountain Standard Time, and some Tuesdays, and I have all kinds of other social media accounts linked in the description down below where you can hang out with me in between. But until then, I'll see you next time. Bye for now.